Greetings, I am Georgette Mayo for Norgard Designs Global Lectures 2023. Welcome to session three of Beads on a Base, a survey of bead embroidery artists, where we will view four of the new bead design innovators. These creators incorporate or solely work in bead embroidery. Many of these artists were found on the Mr. X Stitch website who explores all realms of embroidery. Calling himself the kingpin of contemporary embroidery, Jamie Chalmers' site and interviews were invaluable to my research for this session. Other noted sites which provide information about these artists are Embellished Talk and Textile Curator. All links are provided in resources used slash sites of interest towards the end of this video. We will first look at the work of Ellen Anderton, who is a 3D textile artist whose beaded embroidery works towards a sustainable and inclusive future of textiles. Ellen, is the recipient of the Hand and Lock Embroidery 2022 prize, winning third place in the fashion student category in textile art. She resides in Nottingham, United Kingdom. Quoting from, her, from the Hand and Lock Embroidery website, the annual Hand and Lock Prize for Embroidery was established in 2000 to promote fine art of embroidery. It is now a global competition with entries from over 40 different countries, providing aspiring embroidery students and established designers an opportunity to showcase their talents and gain vital exposure and experience. Her work is called In Large Obscurity, which delves into the curious spectacle of the evolving deep blue. Embroidery emulates the forms of our adapting oceanic life reacting to climate change. Digitally embroidered skeletal coral acts as a base with the contrasting vibrancy of living aquatic life beaded on top. Inspiration was drawn from her experiences of living by the coast and having a desire to communicate and recreate the beauty of our seas through 3D embroidery. She states, I begin to research, as she began to research coral bleaching resulting from rising sea temperatures. And this became a large drive for my artistic practice and graduate collection at the Nottingham Trent University in the United Kingdom. Further inspiration has been taken from my experiences with people with sight impairments and thus exploring color, hue, contrast, and 3D approaches have been important for the embroidery to feel more tactile. This awareness of color helped me create transitions of tones throughout the piece in a way that is blocked out and easy to perceive. All over, a passion of sculpture and the manipulation of small pieces coming together has formed this textile art design. And the materials used in this creation was pad loft, aqua film, felt, organza, natural stuffing fibers, madria threads, recycled beads, glass beads, and cotton thread.
And the following are images from Ellen's Instagram site. And if you are curious to know what be uh, what digital embroidery is, because I was when doing this research, it is quoted as embro digital embroidery software converts a digital image into a stitch pattern that can be read by an automatic embroidery machine. Using a graphic software, it is easier to conceptualize and design a detailed image that would be too complicated to stitch manually. By digitizing this image and converting it into a stitchable format, artists can meticulously and precisely stitch the image on a fabric with a variety of threads, thread types, colors, and patterns. Our next artist is Celia J. And she was interviewed by Mr. X Stitch in his segment of Amplified Melanate, Melanated Stitch, Stitchers, a series of interviews with embroidery and textile artists of color and an interview with Embellished Talk. The visuals of her work are from Celia's Instagram page. Celia's background in textiles started from a young age and she was encouraged by her grandmother who taught her how to use a sewing machine for the first time. She states, she showed me a few embroidery techniques and I simply fell in love with being creative. In particular, all the textures and shapes and textiles were especially fascinating to me. I knew then that I wanted to develop my skills further. She relocated to attend Brighton College where she obtained a degree in textiles specializing in knitwear and business in addition to earning a master's degree. She goes on to state, I'm particularly inspired by the movement Cubanism and I'm a big fan of Picasso. You can see his abstract influence referenced often in my work. I love Cezanne who is famous for his way of merging foreground and background and Dujamp who pioneered portraying multiple perspectives on a single canvas. All these elements fascinate me and I often approach beaded, beaded embroidery using the same principles. My work is often multi-layered, textured, and has a variety of intriguing viewpoints. My African origin has taught me to be bold, vibrant, and expressive when it comes to creating, which is why my pieces often show pieces heavily embellished and capturing the true essence of beauty of the craft. From her interview with Embellished Talk in 2017, Celia says about her beading technique, I applied, I applied the beads one at a time. I'm looking for ways I can speed it up, but I actually just enjoy beading and adding embellishments. I generally experiment with my work and you never know what the outcome is until you are finished. It's like a story and pieces of a puzzle that I continue to put together. Sometimes I do get a little tired, especially towards the end, and I appreciate her honesty. Celia uses calico as her bead embroidery base, stating, my work is totally embellished so you, so you can't see the calico and I want the attention to mainly be on the structure of the beads. Initially, I tried to use colorful fabrics, but I didn't like the look of it. And I thought it drew away from the beauty of what I was trying to achieve. Celia creates and provides beginner friendly DIY kits and workshops. Her aim for each kit is to explore and experiment with new ideas and techniques, as well as create that much needed me time in this busy world. 
Next, we will look at the work of Ratch Gooden of Stitch and Bone. She states, my creations are not designed to be realistic replicas, but rather fantastical representations, dressed up versions of an insect shape that have been embellished and adorned with beautiful beads, fabrics, threads, and Swarovski crystals. Ratch of Stitch and Bone is based in rural Australia. She describes her work as an amalgamation of my imagination, of my fascination and all of the natural world, in particular insects, and my love of creating pieces made out of beautiful materials, as well as creating beautiful textile art. She aims to ignite a spark of curiosity back into those little critters. When asked why Ratch chose to embroider insects, she replies, to me, they are endlessly fascinating. All the different shapes, sizes, colors is just amazing. And I have a never ending source of information, inspiration. More often than not, we overlook these crucial and under, under appreciated inhabitants of the natural world. And my aim is to ignite a spark of curiosity back into these little creatures. My hope is that my work will not only incite the imagination, but to also inspire and speak to others, encouraging people to see them in a more favorable light and to take a closer look. She states, my design process usually starts one of two ways. Either I find an insect shape that speaks to me in one of my many books, in particular vintage insect illustration books, or I create complete color palette of fabrics, beads, crystals, and threads. It all depends of what catches my eye first, form or materials. I am not one to sketch out an idea or do a sample or do anything that is probably known as good planning. Instead, I tend to get a really strong visual in my mind and just work off of that. The visual almost never changes from start to finish and the details in the finished piece are almost always spot on when, with what I first visualized. From there, I plan out how I'm going to construct the 3D body along with getting the shape, size, placement, proportions, and all the little details ironed out. From then on, it's just many, many, many hours, days, weeks, months, bent over a hoop trying to get everything exactly how I envisioned it. I always seem to work on the wings first before moving on to the body, then the legs, the beating and all the, uh, the little finishing touches. Ratchet's website is launching this summer. And in the meantime, you can view her fascinating work on her Instagram page at Stitch and Bone. Our last but not least artist is Tessa Perlo. And again, she was interviewed by Mr. X Stitch under the title Embroidery Alchemy. Tessa is an embroidery, art, embroidery artist based in Philadelphia and New Jersey. She works with repurposed textiles and secondhand garments as a base for her hand embroidery and beading. Her work focus, focuses on themes of magic, nature, and love. She states, my technique evolved over many years, starting with a love of sewing and embellishing clothing with fa fabric manipulation. After graduating from the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City, I began experimenting with embroidery and beading on repurposed clothes, garments, 
that I would make as well as art pieces in my spare time. I think my technique is still evolving as I continue to pursue art. I'm interested in applying hand embroidery to sculptures I create as well as creating clothing as art. I've also become more comfortable with the technical aspect of my craft where I feel like I, I can make a larger pieces and take the time to work on conceptual collections that would have intimidated me when I was just beginning to learn this craft. A creative tip I would share is to make research part of your artistic practice, which is a great tip if I had to say so. As T Tessa emphasizes, using research is a key tool in an artistic journey and is cru a crucial step in understanding your subject matter. Tessa's work holds a strong narrative because her study of, nat of the natural and spiritual world comes through in her designs. Through the work, you can see beyond what is and begin to see the natural landscape and world around you filled with imagined alchemy and love straight from the eyes of the artist which plays very much into our theme this year of our global theme of iHeart. I had to get that little plug in. As you can see in the work, every expressive stitch, this adds movement and dimension to the pieces that bring the work a whole life of its own, capturing the energy that can only be created by slow crafts such as hand embroidery. Tessa shares her techniques via YouTube videos and has a wonderful website. As with my previous videos, here is a listing of sites used in this session. I am sure you will want to check out these artists mentioned and the numerous artists interviewed on the Mr. X Stitch site. Another reminder of this year's global project theme is iHeart, which is a bead embroidery based design, which we hope you take part in. Please continue to join us for session four, where we will take a virtual field trip to Charleston, South Carolina for bead embroidery on display. Thank you for watching and see you next time.